Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Tom Wascom. Tom used to be KZ5TWN, but that expired a number of years ago, and so he's getting back into ham radio now. All he will need to do is pass his technician exam, and then his old general license will be restored, but not with the same call sign, with a newly issued call sign uh, from the normal standard way of issuing them. If he would like to get his own call sign back, he can apply for and get a vanity call sign, and there is a very good chance uh, that he can get what he wants, and he could also go for something different if he wants. What he is asking about is the use of a so-called choke ballon. Um, when you have an antenna, like this J-pole right here, this J-pole was made for a Polaris razor, um, and this was attached to the back of it, and there was a flag on the top of it for going off-roading here, okay? So this is a J-pole. A J-pole is fed down here toward the bottom like this and you'll see that I have the outer conductor here and the inner conductor here. Well the problem is that the J-pole is a balanced antenna. These two are balanced kind of push-pull type of thing and I'm using unbalanced coax. A lot of people just connect it right there and, and don't forget it and don't do anything about it but the instructions on the net for making this antenna suggested strongly that I put several windings of coax together like this to create a choke ballon that would convert the um, unbalanced from this to the balanced over here. Now what unbalanced means is this outside ring connects to uh, ground or in this case the the body of the the frame of the uh, Polaris and that the middle one is the one that is connected to the RF and the RF goes first one direction another one direction another at the frequency of the RF and once you are outside of this coax you don't see any of that all of the RF is kept in here now the other type of way of sending it down is sort of a, a push-pull, a balanced type thing where this goes opposite this, and then this goes opposite this. So if this is positive, this is negative. If this is positive, this is negative. And that happens at radio frequency energies, in this case in the 2-meter band, around 146 megahertz. So it's going quite a bit. Now the problem is that this is balanced is unbalanced line. So the center is trying to feed this, but what happens is this goes back and forth the other way, and it's that energy is looking for a place to go. Now, it can't go inside the coax because the coax uh, is designed to keep its own RF in there. But, oddly enough, it can come down the outside of the coax. The coax has uh, some braid right there that you can just see okay and it's designed to keep the RF inside the coax well if you put RF outside the coax on the outside here it'll act as a third wire in here and you'll have RF coming back down on this now sometimes that's not a problem there's not enough of that to worry about I don't often worry about but this particular design uh, suggested that I do worry about it. This is just a piece of plastic pipe that I cut to length. I drilled a hole in here. I had to use a drill press vise to keep this thing from slipping on me. There's another one down here under the electrical tape. But I wound this in a coil. Now why would I do that? This creates an inductance on that outside wire. What happens inside the coax is completely unknown 
to what's going on outside the coax here. But outside, think of this as a wire in a coil. So you've got an inductance, okay? There's also inter-element capacitance down here. The idea is to give a reactive um, impedance to the RF that's on the outside here, so that by the time you get down over here, it's all dissipated uh, in the coil. Now, is it all dissipated in the coil? No. So, what's the perfect number of windings? Well, there really isn't a perfect number of windings. Uh, every time you add a winding to your uh, choke ballon, uh, it will increase the inductance a little bit, and the inductance tends to uh, impede the flow of RF energy. It'll slow it down to the point where it gets to a point where it's enough lower that it does not cause a problem to the receiver. I think this one is nine turns. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight turns. Okay. And this is RG, um, 8X, RG8X cable. You can do this with any kind of cable. Now, this is fine. It won't produce as much inductance as something at HF, but you're, when you're dealing at VHF, a little bit of inductance goes a long ways. Now, all this does, this is not a transformer. All this does is use inductance in here, in this coil, to impede the flow of RF so that it doesn't come out down here and get down into the radio. Okay, and it seemed to work fine because I used this uh, for quite a while till we sold the Polaris, and this antenna has been sitting in my garage ever since. I'd give it away in one of the giveaways, but I don't know how I'd ship it. <laughs> so, anyway, um, that's how these things work. Now, if you have, say, at uh, you're doing a dipole and you want to put a choke ball in there to keep the dipoles are balanced the coax is unbalanced a lot of people like to put a choke ball in there you can make it bigger you can put in more turns what some people do is actually do about a nine inch diameter loop with about nine turns however that works out to close to 25 feet of coax and at a buck a foot that's not free, okay? Now, <clears throat> I have never had good luck with choke balance. It's just me, it's just me. I've never had good luck with them. So what I do is make my dipoles and do a direct connection of the uh, coax. And you'll find a lot of pre-manufactured dipoles come with no choke balance or you could do even better than this by doing a one-to-one -one transformer ballon. Um, and they work fine. Um, other antennas are made with ballons. The reference station antenna, which is the uh, MFJ2010, so the reference station antenna is a off-center fed dipole that has both a choke truly is a choke ballon but it's wound around a toroid core and then it has an actual real ballon uh, that will give you um, the ratio that you need to match the impedance at that point so it's actually two ballons in that little box very very nice antenna works very well so the answer to the question is how many turns enough is keep adding them till your RF problem goes away. Okay, usually that will be eight or nine turns. They can be small for UHF, VHF, for uh, something on the uh, HF, you might want something bigger. Another thing that you can do instead of this type of thing is to put little ferrite beads around the cable, eight or nine of them, okay, right up to here 
The ferrite beads uh, act as an impedance to the, the magnetic, any change in magnetic force will create heat in the little ferrite bead. And so that will uh, reduce the amount of stray electricity that you have on these things right here. So I think that answers the question here. Uh, just put in enough. Uh, it's a coax and it's called a choke ballon. Um, and the reason it's called a ballon, even though there's no transformer, is because it does convert unbalanced to balanced. Okay, And that's what we're looking for. You can also do it with little ferrite beads. Uh, the MFJ um, hex beam antenna that I have in the backyard goes with the beads. You can put a lot of beads in there. I have this little device here, which is sold by MFJ. It's an MFJ 915 RF isolator, and it's got two connectors on either end and a whole bunch of beads on the thing. And they actually recommend that you put it at the entrance to your station. You uh, could also hang it up. It's waterproof. So there you go. So Tom, there you go. I hope that helps you. You can make a choke ballon with just loops of uh, coax. I'd go with smaller coax if you go with the heavier coax. It, 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 it can be done. It's just the problem is it gets heavy and it gets expensive. Okay, you could buy one of these for less money and, and get the same effect. So, there you have it. Now, I would like to take a moment to thank Alan Stiber. Alan E. Stiber, who is a patron of this channel. What that does when he's a patron is that the money that he provides there uh, comes to be part of channel funds to allow me to bring you these videos. Uh, there are expenses involved. I have an assistant to pay, we get video equipment, uh, and sometimes I buy things to review, and so on. So, uh, go to patreon.com slash ke0og and select something that works for you. And um, I've been putting on these videos the names of my most recent patrons. And I say to all of you, thank you very much. And until we next meet, 73.